From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. This episode is brought to you by the audiobook The Last Observer – A Magic Battle for Reality by G. Michael Vasey, narrated by Darren Marlar. Hear a free sample on the audiobooks page at MarlarHouse.com or look for the link in this show's description. The latest science shows that when we eat actually affects our skin. For example, eating snacks at night it interferes with the skin's ability to protect itself from the sun. Unless, of course, you happen to spill really thick nacho cheese all over yourself. You know, I was just thinking, forest fires, floods, hurricanes, what else could go wrong? And then I remembered, oh yeah, Congress is back in session. After spending 665 days whizzing 254 miles above the surface of the Earth aboard the International Space Station, astronaut Peggy Whitson has touched down safely in Kazakhstan. Although, once she catches up with the news, she might want to go back into space where things make more sense. They say that you'll be noticing more spiders over the next couple of weeks. It's mating season. Y you know, I, I did walk by a web the other day and I would have sworn I spelled Old Spice. Nintendo would like us to know that their classic video game character Mario is no longer a plumber. Yeah, um, he's now a sanitation technician. Starbucks is now selling sushi burritos. <laughs> Big cups of coffee, sushi burritos, they're going to need more bathrooms at Starbucks. In Raleigh, North Carolina, a man accused of killing his wife says he did it because he took too much cold medicine. He must have been taking the non-drowsy formula. Three young men in Louisiana who were struck by a truck and injured recently, they were the ones at fault. That's according to the cops who fined the trio for not wearing reflective clothing at night. Hey, you knuckleheads! Hey, you just dented my truck! What do you got to say for yourselves? Hey, don't just lie there unconscious! Answer me! The big hit in Norway these days is something called slow TV. For example, recently a train ride it was broadcast so people could look out the window at the scenery as if they were on board the train. Seven hours of it. And it was a hit. You know, it, it, it still, though, it was a better storyline than any show on the e-cable TV network. Well, with Hurricane Irma taking aim at South Florida, some flights from Miami to Phoenix that were going for just under $550 are now listed at over $3,200. Coffee? Tea? Price gouging, anyone? Yeah. And would you like a tiny bag of airline peanuts? Yes, okay, great, that'll be $87.50. A Massachusetts man told police that he called his wife evil, and she responded by stabbing him and slamming him in the back of the head with a coffee mug full of ice cream. Thank you for proving my point, darling. Hurricane Irma is a meteorological monster. It's currently a Category 5 storm, and only three Category 5 hurricanes have ever hit the U.S. So we're pretty much going to be without the South from Georgia to Texas for a long time. Swiss veterinarians claim more and more dogs are suffering from stress and burnout caused by demanding owners. One researcher said dogs are suffering increasingly from tension, stomach aches, and headaches caused by stress. There are a number of factors behind it, but in most cases, stressed or demanding owners are to blame. See, this, this right here, this is why you should never talk politics with your schnauzer. Lego is cutting 1,400 jobs. Man, I feel sorry for those people, don't you? I mean, if you spent your entire career playing with Legos, are you truly prepared for the real world? Wisconsin lawmakers will soon consider a bill that would strip repeat drunken drivers of their licenses for at least a decade. The Assembly passed the bill last session, but it didn't get a floor vote in the Senate. So, how serious is this problem in Wisconsin? Real serious. State Department of Transportation data shows that one-third of the state's drunk driving convictions in 2015, the most recent data available, were repeat offenders. Put another way, the 221,576 repeat offenders were more than twice the population of Green Bay. About 52,000 convictions were for a third offense. Nearly 2,800 were for a seventh offense or more. Hey, how about throwing them in jail for a decade instead of the driver's license thing? I mean, that way they can't drive whether they have a license or not. Man. But you know what? What do you expect from a state who calls its sports team the Brewers? 
the money hemorrhaging New York Daily News is being sold to a company known as Trunk, the newspaper publisher formerly known as Tribune. The sale price? Zero dollars. The Daily News, it's, they're, they're known for their crazy and controversial front page headlines, like their recent headline, We've been sold for zero dollars. According to a new study, having two or three beers may be a better painkiller than taking Tylenol. And that might be true, but when's the last time you heard of somebody being pulled over and arrested for driving under the influence of acetaminophen? Jerry Springer says that he's not yet decided on whether to run for Ohio governor. I understand, though, he's already locked in the dwarf transgender serial killer boat. Give money to David Duke and you might just find yourself closing your business. Julius DeRoma owns a bar called Club Jaeger in Minneapolis, but he was forced to close down after it was revealed that he donated to David Duke's 2016 Senate campaign. Well, outraged to learn that their boss had given money to the ex-KKK leader, many employees simply walked off the job. Local DJs and bands also promised to boycott the bar, with one DJ writing on Facebook that he couldn't condone a venue where the owner supports the likes of David Duke and his messages of hate. Former bartender Dree Kingston said the contribution is vile and it's disgusting. Jack Callahan, who canceled the trivia night he hosted, says per the Tribune that employees got angry messages, calling them Nazi sympathizers. A group of men followed and spit on one worker calling her a Nazi lover. The bar was empty by midweek, save for a few white supremacists who showed up to support DeRoma, and by Thursday the remaining employees decided to shut it down for good. DeRoma later told reporters his Duke donation was just basically free speech. He also said the controversy was blown up beyond what it should be. Well, okay, here's the thing. Uh, you do have freedom of speech, and you can support any candidate you want. But the rest of the world also has freedom of speech and can choose to think that you're an idiot and a moron. See? It's simple. Atlanta post office workers have been charged with taking bribes to deliver cocaine. Neither rain, nor snow, nor – ooh, hey, wow, snow! California could become the first state to legalize magic mushrooms. Yeah, that's what they were missing. Paper parking tickets are on their way out. Several cities are experimenting with digital parking tickets. Hey, they've got your license number and your email address. Soon people will have bench warrants out for their arrest because they stopped checking their inbox. A new study says slow walkers are more likely to die young, especially in the case of being chased by a pack of wolves. A theme park in Japan offers a fight with bad guys service for men so that they can impress their dates. Although, come on, let's face it, if you can truly impress your date by taking her to a theme park known for letting you fight bad guys and win, your date isn't all that bright. France's famed Notre Dame Cathedral is literally falling apart, and organizers of a restoration effort are asking for Americans to help. However, the Americans' suggestion of a ground-level cracker barrel is not without opposition. This Friday, Krispy Kreme is bringing back their pumpkin spice donuts, but only for one day and while supplies last. So the chances of you getting some is somewhere between Snowball in Hell and When Pigs Fly. Actor-director Matt Damon says that if you want to film your movie on a Trump property, you have to write a part for Mr. Trump. At least that was the case before he was president. The Donald has made cameos in productions such as Home Alone 2, Sex in the City, and Zoolander and yet somehow he still became president. Remarkable! If you want to electronically whisper sweet nothings into your one true love's ear, do it in an email instead of a voicemail. Why? Well, an email's more effective than a voice message when it comes to expressing romantic feelings, according to researchers from Indiana University in Bloomington. And that's surprising. Previous research, not to mention good old common sense, would suggest that a voicemail message is a more intimate way to connect with others, especially with someone you love, but apparently that's not true for millennials. You know, following this logic, then, the perfect marriage proposal would come via text message. Am I right? If you're already an official weirdo, please share this video on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and other social media to help get the word out. To become an official weirdo, click that subscribe button and click that little bell next to the subscribe button to be a part of the notification squad. And while you're at it, click that like button to let the world know that you are an official weirdo.